we do apologize for that technical difficulty that we just had. Again, we're in Matthews, the 22nd chapter, and what's happening. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put, all right, so a for a subject on today, I want to use the two greatest commandments. The two greatest commandments. Commandments. The two greatest commandments. All right. And those scriptures again was Matthew's the twenty second chapter, and we started at verse thirty four, down to verse forty. All right. All right. So basically, what they're doing here is they're trying to trap Jesus up and trying to catch him, um, but of course they're not able to trap him in any way when it comes to scripture, and. I want to focus on those two great commandments that Jesus is going to talk about uh, or mentions to um, this lawyer when he asked him the question, what is the great commandment? Jesus said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy mind, all thy soul and with all thy mind. All right. So that is totality. That's everything that you have. He's saying that you're supposed to love God with everything that you have. All right? And even even another scripture goes as far as to say, with all thy strength. All right? So that's everything that you have. We should be loving the Lord our God with everything that we have. Realizing that he is our creator. Amen? He's the one that made us. And... We owe him everything. And sometimes it seems as though we feel like we give God a part of us. But God doesn't want a part of you. God wants all of you. You know, people are segmenting pieces of themselves to the Lord. And, or what they call their time. You know, God has certain time slots. Now, of course, you should have specific time wherein, you know, you're going to do your devotions to the Lord. But the truth be told... 24-7 belongs to God. 24-7 belongs to God. Alright? Because God is the one that created the time and decided to put you and I in time. As he exists in eternity. Alright? But he pulls this slide out here that we call time. And he put you and I in it. All the time, 24-7, belongs to God. 24 hours of the day, 7 days of the week belongs to God. And we, we talked about what belongs to God, I believe, just on last week. Okay, it all, all belongs to God. And so, God wants us to come into a clear understanding that everything about us belongs to Him and He requires everything about us. He requires that we give Him our all. God doesn't want part of you, He wants all of you. You know, it's like some people like split in between the middle. They want to give God this part and then they want to give the devil other part. That doesn't work with God. Okay? God is not selling just for this little piece of you or half of you. God wants all of you. So he's saying, love the Lord thy God. Now listen at this. Listen at the verbiage here. The Lord thy God. Okay? Is he your God? First of all, is he your God? Is he the one that you are serving? Is he the one that you're trying to please? Is he the one that you are obeying? <coughs> that will determine whether you, that's really your God or not. If God is your God, then you will be obedient unto him. If you love the Lord, Jesus said, if you love me, you would do what I say. You would keep my commandments. He said, keep my commandments. Do what I say. In other words, be obedient to my word. That is what shows God that we love him. When we are obedient to his word. That's God's love language. Obedience. God's love language is obedience. If you could go back in your mind and you think about the first king over Israel which was Saul. Saul, God gave Saul some, some instructions. 
as to what to do. Now, he carried out some of the instructions, but he didn't carry out all of the instructions. Supposedly, he listened to the people that told him to save the good, the good of the flock and to bring them back and to sacrifice unto God. But God told him to kill all of those things. So if God tells you to destroy something, how can you then bring it back and offer the very thing that he told you to destroy and offer it to him? And think that he is going to accept that as a sacrifice. Something's wrong with that. Something's wrong with that. If God tells you to leave a thing alone, you can't then bring the thing with you that God told you to leave alone and call yourself sacrificing that to God. If it's supposed to be destroyed and God says destroy it, it is supposed to be destroyed. But he saved some of the flock. And not only that, he also saved the king and brought them back. That wasn't what he was told to do. That was not obedience. That was not obedience to the Lord. Okay? That was just not obedience to the Lord. Again, I want to say, um, our, our, our subject for tonight is the two greatest commandments. The two greatest commandments. The two greatest commandments. And we're found in Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Verse 34 through 40. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verse 34 through 40. Amen. So, our obedience to God is what he's looking for. He's looking for obedience. And sometimes we'll do everything else except obey what God has told us to do. Some people figure, okay, if I just go and I put some money on the table, that that's enough. But they're living a life that is not obedient nor in line with the word of God. And they expect God to just simply accept that as a sacrifice. No, the Bible actually tells us to present our bodies as living sacrifices unto God. And then he tells us how the body needs to be. Holy. H-O-L-Y. Holy and acceptable. So you got to make sure it's acceptable to God. Not what you define holy as to be, but what the word of God declare holy to be. Holy, acceptable unto him, God, which is our reasonable service, which is just something that we should be doing anyway. It's what you do. You're not doing God any favor because you live a holy life. And you present yourself holy before the Lord. That's exactly what we're supposed to do. All of our being, all of our being belongs to God. And he wants us to offer all of our being up to him. Lord, take all of me. My part of me, all of me. And that's, that's what God wants. That's what God deserves. And that's what belongs to him. Amen. So we want to make sure that we're giving this back to the Lord. So he said, I want you to love me with all of your all of your heart. I want you to give me all your heart. So let's go to some scripture here and see what God said as far as what he was going to do. All right? And some things that we should do as well. All right? How am I going to love the Lord with all my heart? He's going to fix some things. That will help me to do this. Alright? And help you to do this. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Starting at verse 14. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Starting at verse 14. And that will be 14 through 16. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Alright? This is Jesus. 
perfecting the, his children, uh, perfecting the saints of God. We are being we sanctified through him. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts. See, before the laws of God was written on tablets of stone. All right? And then they had plackets that they would take and frontlets. They would have the laws written and they would tie it around their head and it would come down like this. They had various ways for them to constantly see the word of God. But God is saying, that's, that's not what I'm going to do now. All right? I'm going to make it better. I'm going to make it better. Okay? Now, we do still have the word written in written form. Um, but he's made it even better. Okay? He said, what I'm going to do is I will put my laws into their hearts. And in their minds will I write them. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna do an inside job. I'm gonna do an inside job. Okay, it's not gonna just be on the outside, but it needs to be an inside job. I'm gonna put it inside of them. All right, I'm gonna put it in their hearts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure it's in their minds. All right, and the Holy Ghost will bring all things back to our remembrance. The Bible says, okay, what the Lord has said. The Holy Ghost will bring the Word of God back to your remembrance. The Holy Ghost will remind you how the Lord wants you to live. Okay? That's why you got to make sure you get in your Word now. You got to get in the Word. You got to study, show yourself approved unto God, or that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly write in the Word of Truth. You have to do that. You don't just, don't just go to church. You got to do that too now. You should go to church, hear the Word of God, get as much of the Word of God in you, because you do need to be taught the Word. All right? You need that as well. But at the same time, you need to study the Word of God for yourself also. Okay? We're going to get the Word of God in us. Get as much of the Word in you as you possibly can. Especially in the day and time that we are living in, you're going to need the Word. We are definitely going to need the Word of God so that we can stand on the Word. Because the adversary is trying to turn down everything he possibly can that's concerning the Lord. And if you don't have the word of God in your heart, I don't know how you're going to make it. Okay? You know, we don't know whether we're going to have these books that the word of God is contained in. Always. We don't know whether one day they're going to take the Bibles away or not. Get the word in your heart. Study the word. Get it on the inside. So that you'll know the word and you'll be full of the word. And remember, remember who the word is. The word is Jesus. Alright? That was made. Jesus the, was the word made flesh. Okay? He is the word that was made flesh. So when you get the word, you're getting more of Jesus on the inside of you. You're being full of of the word you're getting full of the word all right we don't just want it to be head knowledge no this 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 has really got to go deeper than just a memorization thing it's got to really get down in the nooks and the crannies all right it's got to get on the inside of your your, your consciousness it has to have purpose serve purpose inside of your being to those deepest parts of you as a human. All right, so we're loving the Lord our God with all our hearts. And, and then as we get over here again to the scripture that's in Hebrews, that 16th verse, verse. This is the covenant that I will make with them again. Them, after these days, saith the Lord, I will, I will put my laws into their hearts hearts and in their minds will I write them. Alright? So that's where the word of God is going at today. It should be going into your heart. It should be going into your mind. 
All right? The Lord want it in your heart. Get it in your heart. It's got to be a heart thing. Or you're not going to live it. You're not going to walk it. You're not going to do it. If it's not in your heart to do it. You understand what I'm saying? The word of God will make you alive. It is the word of God that quickeneth. Us down on the inside. It is the word of God. Amen. So we're going on to um, Psalms. The 119th Psalm. We want to look at the 11th verse. Psalms 1, 119, and the 11th verse. Seeing what the psalmist has to say. I'm going to go to the tenth verse. He says, with my, listen, not part, with my whole heart have I sought thee. When the last time that you went after God with all that was in you? With your whole heart, sincerely, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Don't let me stray. Don't let me stray from your word. Don't let me stray. Don't let me go in a different direction than what your word would have me to go. Order my footsteps. The Bible says that a good man's footsteps are ordered by the Lord. I don't want to go in a different way. I'm seeking you because I don't want to wander away from your commandments. You have people that's wandering away. They're going astray from the will and the word of God. That's why we have to seek him and seek him with all that you have within you. Don't let me go astray. Don't let me go astray. Lead me in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake, Lord. Lead me. Guide me. I'm going to read that again. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy, now, this is, this, is, this is the main scripture I wanted to get to. Thy word. What, what, what about it? What about it? What about it? I have to do something, too. All right? When I'm, when, when I'm reading the word of God. All right? When the Lord is speaking the word of God to me through his servants. Thy word have I hid in mine heart. I got to put it in there. I got to take it. I got to be receptive. See, if I'm not receptive, if I reject the word of God, the Bible talks about when the sower goeth forth to sow seeds. Some falling by the wayside. All right, some fall among thorns. And then there is some that falls in the good ground. You want the word of God to be able to be productive. So you want to be good ground. You want to be good soil. That's why you, you can't allow your heart to become hardened. Mm -hmm. Some people's hearts are hardened. That's why when the word of God comes in, it can't get in their heart. Because they got a hard heart. God got to break the stony heart up before he can get it in you. You gotta cultivate the ground. But if you're working on yourself and keeping your heart right before the Lord, when the word of God comes, it's much easier to take it and hide it in your heart because it's good soil. You won't be one of those people that's ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 
You got to stay good soil, all right? Just because you're good soil today don't mean you're going to be good soil tomorrow. Because if you allow the soil to become hardened because you're not allowing the word of God to constantly cultivate the ground. See, God is going to go in there, all right? He's going to stir up in there to keep that soil the way it needs to be so that it's not hardened. And test and trial and tribulation, if we're not careful, will harden our hearts. We'll become hard-hearted. Not caring. Not having the love of God like we're supposed to. And the Holy Ghost came, and when it came, it says that the love of God was shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Why? Because God himself is love and he wants to fill your heart with his love because he wants the world to see the love of god and how else can they see it but through those that have god on the inside god wants us to be an example of his love toward the world and toward one another but not only that, the Bible lets us know more or less that the world is looking at the church. The world is looking at those that are proclaiming to be saved, that are proclaiming to be the children of God. The Bible said, by this shall they know that you are my disciples, by the love you have one for another. All right? So as the people of God, we have to love one another. God is big on that. But I, I'm not getting to that scripture yet. So I don't want to go in deep into that portion. Let me stick with the God part right now. That's, that's the first thing on the agenda is loving God how we're supposed to and how he wants to be loved. And that's with everything that we have. So again, thy word have I hid in mine heart. Why? This is the reason. That I might not sin against the, this is the reason why I put the word in my heart. This is the reason why I want it in my heart. So you got to have a desire toward uh, the things of God. You have to have a desire toward the Lord. You have to have a desire toward the word of God that you want the word because God is his word. The word is God, okay? And if you don't want the word, you don't want God. This is the truth. If you don't want the word, you don't want God because the word is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God, the Bible says. So, if the Word is God, and you don't want the Word, you don't want God. And you have to understand that. You can't have God without His Word. It's impossible. So, if you're going to have God, you're going to have to have His Word. And we have to desire the Word. The Bible said that we ought to desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. And then you got to be like, want to be like that heart. As the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. I want you more and more of you. And where can I get it? Right here. It's in the word. Here is God. Get the word of God in you. Now, how are you going to say that you love God, but you don't love his word? That's why we have to take the time out to read the word of God. Because you want to get full of the word of God. You want more and more of him on the inside. So they can lead you and they can guide you in the ways that you're supposed to go in. So we want to be full of the word. And so that psalmist said, thy word have I hid. In my heart. See, God's going to do a part, but then we have to do a part too. Lord, I thank you for the part that you're giving me, but I want you to know that I'm also going to search out the treasures of your word. I'm going to dig into the word also so that I can receive more of you. See, God wants to come after him also. As the song said, I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, I need you more and more. How many God chases out there? 
If you're a God chaser, put it in the chat. Say, I'm a God chaser. I am a God chaser. I am going after him. Do you hear what I'm saying? I am going after him whom my soul loveth. See, you got to go after God. You understand? Just like the woman in the book of the Songs of Solomon. All right? She went after him. She was like, have y'all seen him? She was looking for him. And the Bible said, if you seek, you shall find. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. The Bible said that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So God is saying, come on, look for me. Look for me. And where are you going to find him? He's right here. He's right in here. He's right in this book. There's so many treasures inside of this book. All right. Inside of this word, the word of God. All right. God is full of treasure. Treasure that you have not even yet seen. Recognize. You read the Bible through over and over again and go back and read it again and you'll find more treasure that you didn't find before when you read it. This book is alive. This book has transformation power in it. It has deliverance in it. It has healing in it. Everything pertaining to life and godliness is in the book. Whatever we need is in the book. And it never gets old. It is relevant even to today. You have people talking about that's an ancient book and all of that. Let me tell you something. This book is relevant. This book is up to date. All right. This book talks about past, present, and future. And you watch this book continue to unfold. And you just got to say, this is what the book said. And look at what's happening. It is being fulfilled. Okay? Why? Why is it past, present, and future? Because God know all. He see all. All right? Why people are saying this is an ancient book. It is an ancient book. But we serve the ancient of days. All right? He's from everlasting to everlasting. And we just got started. With our little finite minds, puny brains that try to outthink God. That's just funny. Yet we have so many questions. So many things that we have yet to find answers to. And you're not going to find the answer. Some things God not even going to let you find the answer to. He just have it hidden. And, and if, if God doesn't reveal it, you'll never know. I mean, it's just so massive. I mean, his understanding is just so massive. You, you, you just can't touch it. Just the little tiny things just blow our minds. And people just trying to be God and, you know, want to dismiss God and get rid of God and all of that. Mm. Uh, it's it's like particles of dust that's trying to get rid of a God that took the dust and made it into something called you and called me. But yet we want to take that great big God that's able to do something like that and dismiss him. The God that created the entire universe. The God that just spoke and there was. He said, let there be and there was. I mean, nobody else can do that. But we want to take the one that can do that. The one that can set stars in the sky and hold them there. Off of his word. Okay. And they still, still up there twinkling in the sky. You understand? That type of person. We want to take him. I mean, the God that created the cosmos. I mean, let's, let's, let's just come on. And all these planets that we see, yet we're discovering more planets. Our eyes cannot see as far as God has been and gone because he created it all. 
he he hung he hung the heavens like a curtain let's get real with the situation we are no match for God how dare we try to dismiss him from his own creation this is just a craziness that's going on here yet we try to be God and take his place and try to change his rules, his regulations, and try to change his standards of what he has to say and what should be and what should not in something that belongs to him on his planet that he created and put you here. And then you're going to say what should be, a, what should and what should not go on his planet with his people. You're going to change his people into what they want to be. See, we want to change change ourselves and all that foolishness that ain't nothing but the devil because they don't want God to be God if God created you to be a woman you are a woman if God created you to be a man he created you to be a man that's what he wants you to be but no we want to play God be playing God so I'm going to change myself I'm going to go let the doctor give me some pills if I'm a man so I can get me some breasts so now I'm going to think I'm a woman. But I'm going to tell you, you're still not a woman. You're still a man. You're just a man with some breasts that put some hormones in your body that God did not originate to be there in that manner. See, God does all things well. He knows how to do the thing. But you got to go let the doctor do something to you for you to even have it. That already should ought to let you know. The creator do the creating. And then you got people that's cutting off body parts and, and getting somebody to fashion you something that you never even had in the beginning. And then you want to think that you that you a woman. And the woman that's going out here getting the pills so you, you, you know, you're getting rid of the, trying to get rid of as much estrogen as you possibly can and pumping yourself up with testosterone so that you can get yourself a beard. Because we, we do have some of those hormones in our body anyway. But you're going to amplify yours because you want to be a man. I don't care how much you want to be a man. You're still not a man with the beard. You're still not a man. Because, see, you didn't create yourself, so you can't make yourself beard. I don't care what you do. It's just like you can't turn a dog into a cat. It's not a cat, honey. It's not a cat. It's a dog. And stop. You can't turn a you somebody try to turn a dog into a cat and a cat into a dog that's just crazy think about it it wasn't meant to be that and if you were able to do it that means you're you're screwing something up you're screwing it up because it wasn't meant to be that way that's when we get perversion see all that stuff is of the devil and that's why the, the devil don't want you to get the word of god in your heart so you can have a clear cut understanding of the will of God. The one that created everything. The one that people are trying to dismiss like he don't exist. They know they need to. Listen. Why are you getting mad? And it's just the truth. If he doesn't exist, what you getting mad about him for? If he doesn't exist, it doesn't even matter. Why are you getting mad over him? A lot of people that say that God doesn't exist and they don't believe in God, a lot of times it's just because they're mad at God. And that ain't everybody. Some people are just mad at God, so they want to dismiss him. But just because you're mad at God, you can't dismiss him. I don't care how much you want to dismiss him, but you can't dismiss him, honey. He still exists. Because he doesn't need your permission to exist. But guess what? You need his. See, you can't end him, but he can end you. At any time. And that's the truth. God is God, and he's going to continue to be God, and can't nobody stop him from being God. So, they can do whatever they want down here on this earth until a certain point, because everybody is going to meet God. Everybody going to meet their maker everybody and guess what he know what parts he put on you and what he didn't put on you so when you stand before him 
He not going to make no mistake. I don't care if you was able to take some pills to get your voice light. So you can sound like you no longer a, a male. Uh-uh, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, honey. Or make it deeper. So you can sound, you know, get your get your voice light so you can sound like a female. Or make it deeper so you can sound like a man. God know you what you are. He know what he created. He said, I know how many hairs are on your head. That's how much God know you. He know, he know the package he put together. The Lord said, a sparrow don't even fall to the ground and I not know it. See, that's, see, this is this is this is the God that we know, the God that we the God that sits high and looks down low. He know everything. He is omniscient, honey. You don't get nothing past him. And he doesn't make any mistakes. Now, if somebody said, Well, you know, this person, um, their body came out this way. Yeah, yes, sin is the blame. When sin came in, it did a lot of messing up of some things. But God don't make no mistakes. But I tell you what, mankind sure do. And we done messed up so much stuff and we're still messing it up today. And corrupting this earth more and more. The more we try to push God out, the more corrupt it is. And the more corrupt it's going to become. People don't get the understanding of that. The more you want to push him out, the worse it's going to get. And then you're going to wonder. You're wondering how we're going to fix this or how we're going to fix that. You can't fix it without God. You can't fix it without God, honey. You push God out, the more the devil come in. How you gonna get rid of the devil if you don't get God to help you to get rid of the devil? Can't nobody else get the devil out of there. You understand? What I mean? Nobody is as powerful enough but God. You're gonna need God to get rid of the devil. So then you just left all by yourself trying to fight against the devil in your flesh. Well, he yeah, have control over that. Because you done gave in to the devil. That's why we got to have a desire to love God with everything that is within us. Got to have a, a desire. You got to run after God. You got to chase after God. You, you want to have a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. A hunger and a thirst for righteousness. You should, oh, you should just love righteousness. I just love it. I'm trying to tell you the truth. I just love it. I just love holiness. I just love righteousness. Sometimes I just be like, Lord, can I just have holiness? Because sometimes this stuff is just so corrupt. Sometimes people are just so corrupt. And you just long for genuine holiness. Genuine, holy, filled people. Genuine, holy people that's walking after the will of God. That's what I'm talking about. That's doing it like God wanted to do. Genuine love from above. Not the, not the phileo love. Not the fleshly love. All the love of God. That's what I'm talking about. It's so beautiful. The love of God is so beautiful. It's beautiful. I love it. And we should long for it. We should long for it. We should want to have it on the inside. And when you get God, you get his love. Because he is love. The Bible says that God is love. Not God has love. God is love, honey. He is love. My God. So when you get God, you get love. And God will show you how to love people. Because, see, sometimes you got, if you don't have the God kind of love, you're not going to love them. I'm going to tell you now. Some people, you're not going to love if you don't have the love of God on the inside. You're not going to love them. It takes God to love them. But when you're full of God, there it is, honey. You can do it. You understand what I'm saying? It'll amaze you. It will amaze you what the love of God on the inside of you can do. If you will allow God to have his way on the inside. If you get that thing in your heart. You got you gotta want it. You got you gotta want it. Don't reject it. You should desire 
the love of God to just fill me, Lord. Overflow me with your love. Overflow me with your love, Lord. I'm going to the book of Matthew, the 15th chapter. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Matthews, the 15th chapter, verse 7 to 9. Matthews, the 15th chapter, verse 7 to 9. Here Jesus is talking. He says, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth. See, you got a lot of people that's talking about God. God this, and God that. Well, Jesus this, and Jesus that. And he's my Savior. I belong to God. Oh, I choose the Lord. But your life is going to show whether you really do. Okay, as I said, this people draweth nigh, talking about God here though, God is saying, this people draweth nigh unto me with, thy, with their mouth, listen to that, and honoreth me with their lips, it's lip service, that's all it is, it's just lip service, it's not real. You know, people can say a whole bunch of stuff out of their mouth, but in, on the other side, their heart is not what they're saying. You know, you have people that say, oh, I love you. And as soon as you turn it, your back, they're like, mm. they know they don't love you. They trying to kill you, trying to destroy you. If you're trying to kill me and destroy me, how in the world are you calling yourself loving me? Think about that. This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. That's what God is saying. Their heart is far from me. How do you know if your heart is far from the Lord? Even though you go into church, you jumping up, you shouting. Might be even speaking in tongues. You draw now to the Lord. I love the Lord. Okay. I love Jesus. But as soon as you walk out that church, you're going back to your fornication. You're going back to lying. You're going back to stealing. You're going back to getting drunk, getting high. You, you're going back to mistreating people. All right. And all the wrong that you've been doing. But yet you just said you love the Lord. You don't love the Lord. And people don't like to say that. How can she say, I don't love the Lord? Well, Jesus said, if you love me, you would do what I say. I didn't put that in there. Jesus said that. So you're going to tell God he's a liar? I do love you, Lord. The Lord is saying, you do not love me. I'm going to tell you how you love me. You only love me with your lips, with your mouth. But your heart is not with me. Because when your heart is wrapped up into a thing, when your heart is in. See, he said, he said, now listen. If you love me, you'll do what I say. That's how I know you love me. When I see you walking in the wheel. When I see you living holy. When I see you denying yourself so that the will of God can be done in your life. Now I see you loving the Lord. Just because you got up there and said you love the Lord don't mean you love the Lord. You understand? A man can say, oh, baby, I love you. But if he won't help, if, if he ain't put no food on the table, he refuses to pay rent, refuses to pay the gas and electric. He's not making sure that his family is okay. The Bible says he's worse than an infidel, which means he's worse than a person that don't even believe in God. Do you understand what I'm saying? He don't love you, baby, if he's not willing to take care of you. Because love is a deed. 
It's not just something you say, it's something you do. And so when you tell God, Lord, I love you, God is looking to see if you love him. And how do he see if you love him? By your obedience to his word. And if you're not obeying his word, stop saying that. You're telling lies. You're telling lies. Oh, I feel it in my heart. Listen, this goes beyond your emotions. See, real true love is not just an emotional thing. Mm -mm. It goes beyond emotions. It goes beyond emotions. I got chills. So I know I love the Lord. Let me tell you something. You ain't going to always have chills. I don't always have chills. And I love the Lord. You understand? I don't always have chills though. But I'm going to be obedient to his word. I, I'm not always filled with chills when I'm being obedient to his word. I'm going to tell you that right now. Alright? Because sometimes when I have to obey the word of God, because I love him, it calls for me to deny myself. But I love him so much that I'm willing to do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes it's going to hurt you. To prove your love. No, 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 no. It's not always going to be the butterfly. Ooh, just feeling real good. I can just shout right now. Okay, when you got to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle, you ain't going to feel like jumping up and shouting. When the fire is musing on the inside, like David said. You're not going to feel like jumping up and shouting. But love says that I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do so that I can represent you here on this earth. I'm not going to give in to my flesh. I'm going to be obedient to your word. Why? Because I love you. And I've proven it to you every day of my life that I love you. Because you've already proven it to me over and over again, Lord. You understand? Know when Jesus hung on Calvary's cross, that was nothing but love hanging up there. I mean, that was nothing but love hanging up there. While he was allowing them to beat him with the cat of nine tails. Love, baby. Love was being whipped. Love was bruised for our iniquities. It was love. With his stripes we are healed. That was love. Genuine love. Pure agape love. Do you hear me? Do you think he felt good doing that? That didn't feel good. But it was love, honey. So if you're waiting for love to always feel good, you, it's not going to happen. If you got to feel good to show love to God, you ain't going to show it. Oh, no. Because it's, it's going to cost you something. Oh, yeah. It's going to cost you something to show the love of God. It's going to cost you something. Even to show it to people. It's going to cost you something. That's why we got to get this word in our heart. We got to get it in us. And I'm not talking, it's not this hard. You know, we do this, but it's not this. Okay, we got to get it in there. We got to get it in. We got to want to get it in. And you got to get in your scripture. If you don't get in your scripture, you can't get full of word. That's why the devil don't want you to get in your word. You can do anything else but get in your word. He don't want you to read the Bible. You fall asleep every time you read the Bible. Know that you got to make time to read the Word of God. And you want to make time every day. Not some days, but you want to make time to read the Word of God every single day. This is our roadmap to heaven. This is our instructions for life, period. Okay? This is our instructions how to live our lives. This is the do's and the don'ts. It tells us what to do. It tells us what not to do. Even concerning other people. Even concerning yourself. This book tells you how to handle yourself. How to treat.
treat other people, how to treat God. This book tells you this word is God himself talking to you, talking to me. But if you don't read it, how can he talk? He ain't, come on. Now he can talk to you audibly and all that, I understand. But this is, this, this is, this is what you need to be reading, okay? You need to read the Bible, the Holy Bible. All right, and I'm not saying go to all those different guys. Some of those, some of those things is called Bibles, but not Bibles. They commentaries. They call them Bibles, but they commentaries. All right. Somebody explaining something from their point of view, or whatever. Maybe God, you know, spoke to some of them, but it's not all Scripture. Some stuff they done turned all the way around, some other kind of way. And it's like, what in the world? This is not even what this Scripture talking about with me. All right, and I know people trying to dismiss the King James Version, but baby, you get yourself a nice King James Version Bible, okay? All right, you you can get the English the English one and make it easier for you because the, the D and the Thou, I just don't understand the D and the Thou, you know, and all of that. Okay, if you don't understand the D and the Thou, get you one that's 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 the English Standard Version or something, okay? All right, but well, let's try to keep the word being the word as it was designed to be the word. You have some of these commentaries, that's what I call it, some of these commentaries that they take scripture out of it. They done took some of the scriptures out all together, verses of the Bible, gone. My father. So you got to be very careful with that, okay? You got to be very careful with that. Very careful with that. And I'm not saying you can't get study Bibles and, you know, but you just got to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. You got to be able to rightly divide the word of truth and not just simply take somebody else's word that, you know, wrote a commentary on it, basically, and trying to tell you what it's saying. Okay? And it's good to study. You can study, you know, different things if you know what you're doing. You can study, but you got to make sure that you're letting the Holy Ghost lead you and guide you and all of that. All right, eat the meat and throw away the bones sometimes with some of that stuff. Because some of that stuff ain't right. It's just the truth. And if you, if, you, if you knew, all right, and you obeyed, you don't really need all that because you can become confused. All right, so let's get you something that's the, the regular English, all right, nice King James, but regular English that you can kind of understand. And you should be pretty good. All right, and then as you go and grow, you can add stuff on but you don't want to get confused over the word. So, all right. So, I said, Matthew's the 15th chapter, verse 7 to 9. Uh, and I've read that already, but I'm going to read that again. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, say, This people drew a nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. And you don't want your heart to be far from the Lord. Here you come clapping your hands, stomping your feet, and then you leave out, you just said all these great swelling words, and really you just a hypocrite. Because you're not living what you said. You putting on for the people. So you know we are actors. Some people are actors. They're acting. It's not real. They're actors. See, God is into the real, the real you. Will the real you stand up? Do your life measure up to your what you testify? Your life an example of your praise? Can your life praise him? Can your life honor him? He said, they honor me with their lips, but can your life honor him? See, that's, that's real honor. Now you got your life honoring him, and you speak it out your mouth, too. Don't just speak words that you're not living. Your life don't represent what you're saying. He is my Lord, and he is my king. Jesus said, how, how, why call me Lord, Lord, and doeth not the things that I say? Because if I was your Lord, and I was your master, you would do what I say. So he's not your Lord, he's not your master, if you're not doing what he says. I know you don't like it, but I'm telling you truth. 
See, we don't want to face the truth because we just want to have, be in our feelings, in our emotions. But I feel like it's not about what you feel. It, it, it don't matter. It's just like people talking about, I, a male talking about he feel like he a female. And a female saying she feel like she a male. Well, guess what? If I said I felt like I was a white person today, it's not going to change my color. I'm still not a white person, honey. You understand? Just because I feel, it doesn't make it factual. Okay? It, it doesn't make it factual. It is not about your feelings. It is about facts. It is about what God say it is. And if God said it's yellow, it's yellow. So you can't tell God, I love you. If he says, if you love me, you would do what I say. That means you love me. Well, yes, I do. But you, but you ain't doing nothing that he's saying. You're going to tell God he's a liar? Because that's how I feel. I Because you're emotional. Love is past your emotions. Yes, we do get emotional, but it's beyond emotions. Because sometimes you're not going to feel like it. You're not going to feel like doing what you know is right to do. You're not always going to feel like it. But when you love him, you are driven to do it. You want to do it because you love him. And nobody making you do it. You understand what I'm saying? You're doing it because you love him. You're willing to bring yourself under submission to his will because you love him. You know, the, 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 the cliche goes, put your money where your mouth is. No, put your life. Where your mouth is. Show it through your actions. What you do says whether you really love them or not. So don't get mad at me. How is she going to tell me? Well, just read the book. Jesus told you. I didn't tell you. Jesus told you. He said, if you love me, this is what you would do. And if you ain't doing that, Come on. The book is to all of us. The book is to all of us. So we love the Lord. That's exactly what we are supposed to do. Let's keep his word. Do what he tells us to do. Because I don't want my heart to be far from the Lord. I don't want to be saying a bunch of stuff out of my mouth. And I'm not going to live up to what I'm saying out of my mouth. If I'm calling him my Lord, then that means he should be reigning in my life. He should have control in my life. He's my Lord. We have to understand what Lord means. That means he is over you. That's what it means. He's over you. If he's over you, he calls the shots. He the boss of you. And he can't be the boss of you if you're going to be the boss of yourself. See, we want to be sometimey with the thing. Sometimes we want God to be the boss of us. It depends on what it is. Other times we want to be the boss of ourselves. Especially if it's something that we don't want to do. Even though it's the right thing. We don't want God to be the boss then. We want to be the boss. And we want to call the shots. Because we don't like it. We don't like the will right now. I don't like the will of God because I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to humble myself. I don't want to have to humble myself. You know, sometimes God said, go apologize to somebody. And you just, you know, you wrestling. I don't want to go back and apologize to them because your pride is hurting you. Oh, my God. I don't want to go back and tell them. You know, I know. I, you know, I used to have that problem, when, you know, with my stepfather. Oh, my Lord Jesus. When I was younger. Woo! That put a hurting up on me. I'm trying to tell you the truth. Woo! That killed me out. That killed my flesh. If I'm trying to tell you, if that thing wasn't killing my flesh, mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Because the truth of the matter was, I felt like he was not my father. 
I'm telling you, he was my father. And whoo, it was a rough sailing for me. At times, you know, I, it, you know, things get better as you go, you know, and learn the ways of the Lord. But I'm trying to tell you, Jesus, I would have to go back and apologize. And it would be, I could feel the pain. I'm trying to tell you, I was feeling the pain. Because I had to humble myself down and go back and say, I was sorry. And a friend of mine told me the truth. She was like, well, if you don't do it, you won't, <laughs> you won't have to go back and apologize. Which was so true. You know, and it seemed like you just would get that, you know. But, yeah, she helped me out. She helped me out. Just with those three words. If you don't do it, you won't have to go back and apologize. If you don't get in your flesh and let your flesh have its way. Because you're getting out of the will of God. All right, you can't be getting smart. You're getting out the will of God. And if you get out the will of God, you know, if you're going to be in the will, if you're going to get back in the will, you're going to have to get the thing right. So sometimes it is go it's a killing. Because you got to humble yourself. You have to kill your flesh, kill the pride out, so you can do the will of God. This is just the truth. If you want to be right with him. And it is so worth it. It's worth it. The devil don't want you to live the word. The devil don't want you to be a peacemaker. He don't want it. He loves confusion. But God is not the author of confusion. He's not the author of confusion. Let me go ahead and move on. You got to love the Lord with all your heart. You got to love the Lord with all your soul, your total being. All right? And you got to love the Lord with all your mind, your thinking, your consciousness. God talks about that as well in his word, how we should think. All right? And, and you can only think the ways of God if you allow the word of God to transform your mind. The Bible said, and be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to let God in your mind, honey. You got to let God in your psyche here. You got to let God move the cobwebs out. You got to allow God to change your way of thinking. Mm-hmm. So the next time somebody try to tell you you've been brainwashed, say you absolutely right. The blood of Jesus had to wash my nasty, dirty, filthy brain. I needed a new mind, honey, because my mind was not righteous. I'm so glad I've been brainwashed. That's the kind of washing of the brain I had. A cleansing, a purifying in the brain. I'm not, not brainwashed. Where, you know, somebody just done taking me over and I just don't know my left from my right and they just got this control and I'm walking around like a mommy. No. But thank God for washing our brains. Yes, you need a brainwash. Be ye, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so God can turn you into what he wants you to be. All right, the type of person he wants you to be, which is a godly person. We were walking around dead in trespasses and in our sins. But thanks be to God that he made a way out for us. And he saved our souls. And thank God for the washing of the brain. Keep it clean, Jesus. Away from the filth of the world. The ungodliness that's in the world. Let me think like you want me to think. Walk like you want me to walk. Talk like you want me to talk. Be how you want me to be. Let me meditate on you. Keep my mind stayed on the things of holiness and righteousness and godliness. Let me stay away from the filth of the flesh. I don't want to dwell on the fleshly carnal things that are not of God that pull me down instead of raising me up. 
When God is trying to take you high, the devil is trying to take you down in the wrong direction. God is trying to pull you up and the devil is trying to pull you down into ungodliness and filthiness and unrighteousness. God is looking for somebody to love them like they're supposed to love them. Let's go to the book of Psalms, the first chapter. Psalms, the first chapter. the first chapter and the second verse. Well, I'm going to go to the first verse and carry on just to get a little bit more. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Okay? If they're not righteous, they're not holy, don't walk in their counsel. Because listen, God's ways are not carnal ways. The spirit lusteth against the flesh, and the flesh lusteth against the spirit. And God does not respond like carnality would respond. So if they are ungodly counselors, all right, and that they are telling you things contrary to the will and the word of God, do not walk in that. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Yeah. But, this is my verse I want to get to. But, his delight is in what? In the law of the Lord. Now listen at this, because we're dealing with the mind. And in his law doeth he meditate, think, go over and over day and night see you gotta go over the word you gotta go over the word in your head honey in your mind you gotta rehearse the word of god you want to get it locked inside of your being you want it to be in your heart not just not just just book knowledge here i know it it says da 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 no, you, this thing has got to capture you. It has to become a part of you. That's when it's in your heart. When it becomes a part of you. And you get wrapped, tied, and tangled up in it. You understand what I'm saying? So when the devil comes, he can't get it out. Because he comes because he want to get the word of God out of you. Excuse me. He want to be able to take the word of God away from you. Mm-hmm. And he comes and he looks to see whether it was good ground or not. And when it's not that good ground, sometimes the people, they get the word of God. And the Bible talks about them and it says, you know, they receive it with gladness. But then the thorns come up and choke the word of God out of them. And they didn't have no root. So you got to get rooted and grounded in this thing. That when the devil come to try to get it, is he just can't get it out of you. He can't, he can't get it out of you. Roots are gone all over the place. You know what I'm saying? It's all over the place. He can't just pluck it up out of you. You want them roots to grow deeper and deeper and deeper into the Lord. More and more of the word. More and more of the word. Meditating on that word. Taking the word of God in. Thinking on the word of God. Let the word of God show you how God wants you to live. On a daily basis. Bask in the word of God. It's so good. So good. I can't even explain how good it is. 
It's good. It's, I cannot explain it. But some of you know what I'm talking about. When you get in the Word of God, and when you when you feel when you're full of the Spirit of God, and you get in the Word of God, the connection. And it's like you can just you can feel your soul feasting on the word. It'd be so good. The psalmist said he, he's like honey in a honeycomb. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I mean, it's, it's it's real good. The word is so so good. I mean, it is food for the for the soul, the real soul. The real soul food is the word of God. Mm-hmm. It's not the collard greens and the fried chicken and all of that. We call that soul food. But real soul food is the word of God. It will keep your soul alive. It will feed your soul. Your soul needs this word. All souls need the word of God. You die without the word. Just like if you don't eat regular food, what's going to happen to you? You got to eat. If you stop eating the word of God, you're going to die spiritually. Your soul needs the word. If you stop reading your word, go back to reading your word. You need to read your word. All right? You have been malnourished. Some people are suffering from malnutrition. Because they're not getting the word. necessary that you get the word in let's go to uh joshua the first chapter joshua first chapter and see what God had to say to Joshua. Because see, God will help us out. Tell us what we need to do. Joshua, the first chapter, the eighth verse. It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So don't listen. Don't cease to speak about the word. So you got, see, they, they would sit at the table and they would talk about the word. Mm-hmm. But thou shalt meditate. Think on this. Go over it and over. Meditate. Mutter. Go over it over and over and over again. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Think on that thing. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mutter. Over and over. But thou shalt meditate there and day and night. That. Why? Listen that. Why? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate there in day and night. All right? Day and night. Think on the word throughout the day. Think on the word day and night. Why? That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. I want to do it all, Lord. How can I observe to do all? By thinking about it. By meditating on it. All right? I want to be careful to make sure that I'm doing what God wants me to do. So I got to think on his word. When they say, what would Jesus do? The word will tell you. Think back on the word. That's why you got to get the word of God in you. Then you can think about it. when the situation comes up. Okay, what would Jesus do? Think back to the scripture. He said, for then, then, okay, when you do this. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous when you meditate in the word of God. When you talk about the word of God. Then you're going to make your way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Good success. Okay? Good success. Not bad kind of success. But good success. Good success. Success that is of God. All right? The blessings of the Lord. You want them to overflow you. All right. And so let me go back real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. I'm about to I'm about to wrap this up. 
but I, I want to finish this and I'm trying to do it pretty quickly back to the 22nd chapter so I can go to my my last my next verse there Verse 39, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Remember, we're talking about the two greatest commandments. The one is the loving of God. The second is loving other people. All right? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. How you love yourself. And that, that scripture right there, all right, that's, that's the working on self. That's the working on self. This is the working on self scripture. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because it makes you think, all right, how would I want to be treated in this situation? What would I want to be done to me? Or what I want to be said to me? What response would I have given to me think about it so before we do certain things if we would meditate on that scripture some things we wouldn't do some things we wouldn't say some ways we wouldn't act if we want to fulfill the scripture that's just the truth but if you don't if you don't get the scripture in your heart and you're not thinking about the scripture you'll go on and do and say things that's contrary to the scripture Love thy neighbor as thyself. I got to think about you as if you were me. That's what I got to do. So if I know I wouldn't harm myself, then why would I harm you? Because that's not loving you like I love myself. Because I, I don't want to be hurt. Okay? Let's think about that. Let's, um, Luke, Luke the 10th chapter, Luke the 10th chapter. Luke, the 10th chapter, verse 25 to 37. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Mm -hmm. He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And this is what the man said. And he answered, answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, this is what Jesus said, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou wilt, and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? You shouldn't ask that question. Hmm. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him. And bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. And set him on his own beast. And brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host. And said unto them, take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now 
of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that shewed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. So in other words, your neighbor is everybody. Everybody. Your neighbor is everybody. This man was leaving from Jerusalem, going down to Jericho. A priest comes, looks, goes about his way, goes on the other side. He's not going to help the man. A Levite comes, he looks on the man, and goes on the other side. He doesn't help the man. But a Samaritan, more or less it seems as though he probably wasn't his kind, the Samaritan has the compassion on this man. And the Lord is saying, I want you to have compassion on everybody. You understand? Not just your people. I want you to go and show human beings. Human beings. Love. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you see they have need, then help them. If you have the ability to help them, help them. Show the love of God. How would you want somebody to do you? If you had children and, and you, and you were, were not capable of doing everything that your children had need of, okay, would you not want somebody to help you? So if you see somebody else in that state, and you have the ability to help them, you should help them. Don't be talking about just me, myself, and I. No, that's your neighbor. God shows you a need. And if you're capable of assisting with that need, then do that. Love your neighbor as yourself. Mankind. Not your race. Not just your church folk. Not just your family members. Blood is thicker than water. Don't just help them. Help mankind. If we can lend a helping hand, then that's what God wants us to do. Love the neighbors as ourselves. And I'm almost done here. Matthew, the seventh chapter, and verse 12. I basically said it, I believe, but we're going to read it real quick. Matthew, the seventh chapter, and verse 12. And this is my last verse of scripture. I just wanted to get through this. Okay. The Lord is saying here. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophet. Okay? How you want to be treated, treat people how you want to be treated. If you don't want to be disrespected, then don't disrespect other people. That's just true. If you don't want no, if you don't want people howling and screaming at you, don't howl and scream at other people. Do unto others as we would have them do unto us, not as they do unto you. See, so don't don't screw the scripture up. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say do to people what they do to you. It said as you would have them do to you. Because if we were doing to people what what they do, Lord knows we we all gonna be out the will. Uh -huh. We're going to be out of the will. We want to make sure that we stay in the will of God. And that's by doing unto them as we would have them, what we would want them to do. How we would like them to treat us. That's the Bible. Alright? That, that's loving your neighbor as yourself. Because most people is not going to mistreat themselves. Now, if you got a mentality that, you know, you think, well, that's how I would do myself. Well, if you have the bad kind of thinking, you don't really love yourself, then, then that's the issue. Because you don't, you don't have genuine love for yourself, so you're not going to genuinely love them either. So you need to ask God, start with you. 
Lord, start with me. I need to learn how to love myself, treat myself good. See, God wants you to treat yourself good. I'm just telling you the truth. Because he loves you. This is what you got to understand. God loves you. You, your person. He loves you. Whether you're right or wrong, he loves you. Now, he don't like the fact that you're wrong if you're wrong, but he still loves you. You, as a person, individual. God loves you. Not only does he love you, but he wants you to love you. Mm -hmm. He wants you to love you, and he wants you to take good care of you. Some people got to learn to love themselves. And some people really, you know, they can do things for other people, but they won't do things for themselves. No, you need to learn to love yourself. Treat yourself well. I'm not saying get all up into yourself. That's not what I'm saying. But acknowledge yourself as another human being walking on the planet Earth and that you deserve just as much as the next person. Acknowledge that. Amen. You deserve to be treated good. You deserve to be loved. God loves you. I mean, listen, if God loves you, come on. Love yourself. Do better for yourself. Make yourself feel good, honey. Make yourself feel good. Do some things that you like to do. I'm not talking about nothing outside the will of God. Because that's just... Don't do unrighteous, okay? But treat yourself good. Okay? Think of some things that make you happy. Things that make you smile. You don't have to wait for other people to do things for you all the time. Do it for yourself. Do it for yourself. Sometimes people waiting for somebody to take them out to dinner or something like that. You don't have to wait for nobody to take you to dinner. What you want? Go to the restaurant, order it, sit down, eat it. You don't have to be with people all the time. Some people, if they don't have other people, they, they just lost. Sometimes it's good to go out by yourself. Some people, they can't even go to the mall by themselves. They can't go shopping. Do stuff with yourself. Get to know yourself. Some people don't even have a relationship with their own self. I'm just being truthful. You don't have a relationship with your own self. Your own person. Let me tell you something. God has a relationship with himself. He does. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God has a relationship with himself. Let us make man. He has a relationship. Jesus was down here and he was talking to the Father. Okay, if they want. But listen, a relationship. Get a relationship with your soul. So if there's one around a relationship with everybody else, get a relationship with yourself so you get to know you, honey. Take time out for yourself. I'm not going to keep on going, but I could. I'm take, I mean, I'm serious about that. Communicate. Communicate. I'm, I'm not talking about crazy stuff. <laughs> but get to know yourself. Get to like yourself. Get to love yourself. Mm-hmm. Get to love yourself. Have patience with yourself sometimes. Stop throwing yourself under the bus. All right? If you can do better, say, I can do better. I'm going to do better. Forgive yourself. If God's forgiven you, why are you still holding it over your own head? Move on. Get past it. Forgive yourself. You forgiving other people, forgive yourself. Yes, it was wrong, but forgive yourself. Forgiveness is available. Nobody's saying to be like, oh, it doesn't matter. No, it did matter. Yes, I did it. I'm sorry. I repented for it. Now I'm going to move on with my life. I'm not going to live in it. It's over. It's done. God forgave you. Move on and be happy. Forgive yourself, honey. Love yourself. 
And sometimes that's why some people can't do things that they should toward other people because they don't have it for themselves. So they ain't forgiving themselves, they ain't forgiving you. Some people hate that self. You, you got to get past that, honey, because God loves you. He don't want you hating up on yourself. I don't care what people have said about you. You understand? You deserve love. You deserve love. And it doesn't matter about what they have to say. It doesn't matter how they feel. Okay? Because the greatest of all love you, and that's God. I mean God. I mean God. God loves you. And that's what means the most. That's what means the most. The two greatest commandments. Alright? So that's what we talked about tonight. So that's about loving God. And it's about loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. Okay? That's what that's about. At this time, I'm going to ask if you would go to your Giblify, go to your Cash app. Amen. And just be a blessing to the ministry, if you will. We are thankful that you decided to join us again today. God bless you. Amen. And take that word of God and rake it to yourself. Come back and listen to it all over again and get in your word all over again. And just allow God to open the word of God inside of you to expand it excuse me, in your mind to enlighten you more and more, all right? And meditate on that word. Feast on that word. And let God change some things that need to be changed. He'll do it if you let him. If you know that you're not in the place where you need to be, spiritually concerning these scriptures, then that means there's just work to be done. We all have work to be done. We all got to work. You understand what I'm saying? All of us. Because we all have not yet arrived. So we got to work on ourselves. So that we can become better and better and better for the Lord. That's what it's about. Because we want to show God that we truly love him. And let me tell you this. The Lord said, how can you say you love me and you don't love your brother? Now, he said if you, if you do that, that you are lying. I didn't say that. Bible tells us that. How can you love God whom you have not seen and hate your brother who you see? See, you can't separate God from his people. It's just like you can't separate a woman from her children. If you don't love her children, then how can you say you love her? Because her children are a part of her. And God is that way. My children are a part of me. And if you can't stand my children, you can't stand me. When you can't stand them, you can't stand me. You understand what I'm saying? That's why when people do you wrong, they're not just doing you wrong. They're doing God wrong. And God is taking it personal. And he tells you, don't try to, don't try to fix it yourself. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. All right? God knows how to fight those battles. So if you're walking around with hatred and malice and, and all that stuff against, against your brother or your sister in Christ, you got to get it straight. You got to get it fixed because you're not going to be saved. You hear me? You're not going to make it to heaven with hatred in your heart against your brothers and your sisters. It's impossible. Impossible. So, let's get all those things in line and get those things straight. Because we have to love one another. That's the family thing. Get that right first. Okay? Get it all right, structured right like it needs to be. Toward one another. And don't wait till tomorrow. Do it today. You got something going on, you need to get it right, do it today. You able to do it today, do it today. Because who knows what tomorrow may bring. And who knows who's going to still be here tomorrow. You don't know and I don't know. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Remember we love you. But God loves you best. Be blessed.